Hello friends, this is the Tokyo Drafts. In this video we're going to show how we can use Revit and Enscape in order to create exports which we will later use in another tutorial to create a post-production of an exploded axonometric. What I'm going to do today is I'm going to use different settings in order to have a lot of material to use to give me flexibility to create the visualization that I want. So we're here in Revit. This is the model. Let me turn on the mass. I have some curtains over here. Shout out to Balkan Architect. You are the reason these curtains could actually happen. So I'm really grateful for your tutorials. And let's open Enscape. What I really like about Enscape is how fast it renders and the um, way that I'm able to navigate within the model. It allows me to be more creative and to experience the space in a more realistic way than just orbiting around in the normal Revit um, interface, let's say. There must be a quicker way to zoom out. Ah. Yeah. So at this point, the way to create the axonometric view would be to go over here and to switch to orthographic, which automatically removes the dark background and replaces it with white. And uh, I have some views from before, but I'm just going to create this as a view, axonometric. And now that this is here, let's start this so that we can find it easily. It's this one. So if by mistake I move something, I can just click and it's going to return to this position, which is very handy. Especially because we're going to export many uh, multiple renders. So for that we're going to go to visual settings. Let's move this over here. And we're going to have different versions of shades. We're going to have a version with um, ambient occlusion, something close to ambient occlusion. We're going to have a material version, a version without materials, a version with shadows, a version without shadows. Basically, we're just going to try to take out of this model as much juice as we can see what we can do with the sun brightness. Yeah, for example, if we remove the brightness, we have just the material. So let's start with this one. Okay, this is the same. And to export, uh, let's check that we have a good resolution. So let's make it ultra. And in the output, let's go for a bigger one. Let's go for, let's say, 4,000 by 6000. And here we can press export object ID, material ID and depth channel. This is going to be useful later. So just keep this checked. The resolution should be high. The compression quality should be maximum. I'm not sure if it makes any sense to go for lossless. Let's keep it to maximum for now. And I'm going to look into that a bit more. Uh, Okay, yeah, 50%. And now we're just going to click screenshot. We're going to make the folder. Let's name the folder. It's always a challenge to keep the files organized. One, materials only safe. And now for the rest of the exports. Okay, let's wait a little bit. This is rendering in real time. It's super quick. Uh, yeah, Enscape is really the fastest rendering engine I know. Maybe you know another one you can recommend down in the comments. I'm open to learn new software that is quick and intuitive to use. A little bit longer. Uh, 
All right. And then for the next export, we're going to go to output and check, uh, check this box again because we don't want again to create the same views. It's going to get hectic inside the folder. And now, ah, oh, sorry. Yeah, we need the brightness. There we are. I think I saw a tutorial that said that you shouldn't go over 50% sun brightness. I'm not sure if that's true or not. Um, yeah, so if I do that, because the model, this is a conceptual expression of the building, right? So to have these floors separated in that way, it's a conceptual move, but because it is in 3D, basically this floor casts a weird shadow on this floor and this floor on that one. So I think for that reason I should try to take these shadows over here, basically. And let's make a white model with shadows and then have some outlines. No, let's leave it for, for later. Now the exposure would make sense to make it bigger. That's not bad. Ah, just keep in mind Apparently, when you zoom in or out, it changes the orientation. So, okay, let's say if I zoom in again and I do this. Huh. If I do this and then I do this. Point. I guess it's back. But anyway, I need to move again the shadows. Ah, okay, yeah. When I come back it uh, moves the shadows back to their original point when I created this view. So let's leave it at that. That's good enough. What I would ideally like is for now this white material to be a bit brighter, but we can change that in Photoshop with the levels adjustment layer. So, but let's see what I can do. No, this is too burnt. Let's leave it at 64. Ah, okay, yeah. Also contrast? Hmm, that's not bad. But again, it's a bit dark. You see, it's a lot of trial and error. Ah, okay. When I do this, the shadows are really accentuated. Somehow now the temperature shows to be much warmer. I'll just leave it like this and I'm going to edit it in Photoshop later on. So that's good. We'll leave the same resolution, we'll leave the same frames so that they can really easily overlay each other in Photoshop and then we're going to create the screenshot. And this is gonna be white mode shadow one. Because we might create another one with shadows, just to see what we can do with it. So now we have the second. Um, we have this one exported. And now let's create another one. I, I want to find out, okay, why it disables texture rendering, makes your visualization look as if it's made out of paper, makes the render look like polystyrene, the sunlight scatters through thin geometry, okay, I don't have that much thin geometry, it's a bit, just a detail, um, let's put it back to none, now we have shadows, it's super exposed, so let's Let's put it back to the defaults by pressing this arrow, rewind, I guess. 
everything is back to default and let's bring this down a notch and now how about we export different shadows for this the way the way we do that is press shift oh, I didn't say before press shift and right click and drag ah. but it's better to first hold the right click then press shift and then drag because otherwise it starts rotating the model mm, let's do I mean that one is not bad also it's kind of interesting it's not bad something like this maybe mm. let's say something like this and what I'm going to do is I'm going to reduce okay I'm going to reduce the shadows a little bit hmm yeah let's do that my mouse is not coordinating that well actually I, I will remove the highlights this looks much more atmospheric. What about this? It's also interesting. Okay, I'll leave it as it was. And now I'm going again to export this one. And I'll call it... Ah, I forgot to name this. Rename. This is number two. And we're going to have number three. Material Shadow Oops Shadow Two Okay Let's render that in real time <laughs> I have a mic over here, I hope I didn't kill it by moving too much. This is my first video with this setup, so I'm sorry if it's not perfect. I'm gonna work on it to make it better. Okay, this is done. And then let's do a last one. That... It could be with the outlines. I usually go for around 25% because as you'll see if you go for more it becomes too thick but some people might like this aesthetically um, but it's not my cup of tea to make it so thick. I'd say at most I'd go for a 30% and maybe then even try to um, reduce the opacity of that layer and you see like it already looks like very decent it's really nice so it's gonna be easy for us to create something even nicer in Photoshop once we have such a nice export from Enscape already and again I'm going to take out all the shadows and I'm going to go for the white so that I just have the lines I'll go for polystyrol for that one with the exposure, I think, no, it should be over here. And then, let's see. That's interesting. Shadow sharpness, artificial light brightness, and be bright. It doesn't change much. Sky output. Source. Doesn't change anything. Okay, yeah, and then when we make the highlights more pronounced, that's when it actually creates this ambient occlusion effect. Let's leave this be. Let's leave this be. I don't want vignette. I don't know why people like vignette so much. Apparently they do. That's so pretty. Mm, I might make one without. Uh, 
25 is about right. Okay. Transmission. What is the transmission? Determines how much light is transmitted through geometry. Okay, I don't want to mess with that. And let's create that one. That looks quite cute. Yeah, so that's a way to make ambient occlusion in Enscape. I might make a separate video for that if... Because this video has a lot of stuff already going on. I'm sorry about that. I'm learning how to organize the material as I go. Let's go back here. Okay, we're over here. And let's export that one. We're going to go for ambient occlusion wannabe with outlets. Everyone has their own system of naming things. I'm a bit more descriptive, but I know that it's not everyone's cup of tea. So feel free to have your own naming system. So apparently all my exports have been cutted out over here. Well, this is the case, but this one is not. That's strange. It's strange, but anyway. These are the exports for now. I'm going to go through them again. So be careful of the resolution because it might cut out parts of the image you want. Because even though you can see it in the camera, there's a chance that if the resolution is, the ratio is weird, it's not gonna export the whole thing. So keep that in mind. We don't want that one. Ah, oh, this is the depth channel. Okay. Uh, this is the material ID and this is the object ID. These are quite handy. You see in the other tutorial I have already uploaded. And that's it. So this is how we export from Enscape. This is my workflow for when I want to have bigger control in post-production. I just create as many exports as I can, I play with the settings and then I adjust things as I like in Photoshop, which you can see in my first video that uh, is already up in my channel and there is a chance I might re-upload that one because I did a breakdown, but if you would like for me to do it from the beginning, I might be able to do that. So let me know in the comments below. Thanks for watching and see you on the next one. Bye bye.